Hello and thank you for joining us on Newsweek where we highlight some of the biggest stories that made the headlines recently. I am Jacinta Ubiuhu. Today on Newsweek, this week, the presidential flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress, APC Bola Ahmed Tunubu, holds a closed door meeting with former President Olusha Gobasanjo in Abiyokuta, the Ogun State Capital. Also, the National Union of Electricity Employees suspends its nationwide strike for two weeks after a meeting with the Minister of Labor, Chris Ngigi. Later on the program, we'll take a look at uh, comments by the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, saying Nigeria spends 18.39 billion naira daily on petrol subsidy payments. We bring you details in a moment. Stay with us. Well, uh, the presidential candidate of All Progressive Congress, Bolatinubu, met former President Olusha Gwabasanjo at his residence in Abiyokuta. Ashwaju Tunubu was accompanied by APC Chief Tembisi Akonde, Nuhu Rabudu, uh, Speaker of House of Representatives Femi Bachabia Miller, Governor of Ogun Dapo Abiodun, former Governor Sh uh, Shogu Oshoba, Gwenga Daniel, and other notable leaders of APC. Details in this report. It was designed to be a private visit by the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Ashiwajo Bola Tinobu, to former President Olusegun Obasanjo, who is now an elder statesman. He was accompanied to the meeting by Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila, PC Akonde, Malam Nohu Ribadu, the governor of the state that was Abiodun, former governor Shegun Oshoba, Binga Daniel, and other notable leaders of the party. He was warmly welcomed by the former president who took him and those on his entourage to the inner hall. <laughs> Journalists were prevented from the meeting, which lasted for more than two hours, and sources within the meeting say it was a cordial one, as the APC candidate had his lunch at Obasanjo's place. Ashiwaji Obola Tinobu and his team later proceeded to the MKU Abiola Stadium, where artisans in the state celebrated their day. He noted that he was not in the state to campaign, but to just greet and pray for them to be successful in their endeavors. And we are glad with all the support that you are given. Yeah. Uh, the campaign is not started yet. I'm just here to greet you, say hello, and God bless you. His visit to Ogun State, though not planned to be an elaborate one, turned massive, and many residents, associations, and groups expressed their love for him. Kazim Aloy, TVC News. Abe Okuta. Welcome back. And Asoji Balatimu was the governor of Lagos when Lushego Basanjo was the president of Nigeria between 1999 and 2007. Joining me in the studio to discuss this, I have head of research act of positive transformation initiative, Kolawundi Johnson. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me too, Jacinta. All right. Now, Aswaju um, and Obasanjo were not best of friends, but considering Aswaju's uh, liberal personality, what do you make of this visit uh, to the former president, Alicia Obasanjo? Well, liberal personality. I don't think it's more about his liberal personality, but about his strategy to win the election. Mm -hmm. um, first, you won't look at it from the political angle alone. You look at it first from, from the, you know, uh, uh, the, the Omolua Biango. This is the Southwest. He is running for an election, and he needs the block support of his own region. And uh, the Yoruba will say, Idle Latin Keshorode, that is, the house must, you must ensure that the house is good because it is, it is that omen that will smell out, that, and that will give you out also, you know, that you will take out to other places. So you can leave the leaders in your zone, especially a former 
president. In fact, the only one for that matter. It is, it is, it is, it is part of respect, giving honor to whom honor is due for him to go there. So leave politics aside. It is, it is, it is part of us, part of our virtue, you know, you know, the value system we have that we promote in the Yoruba, you know, land. So that for him is good. And two, politically, irrespective of what you say, Obasanjo is, is, you know, some would describe him as an institution. If you cannot have him as your friend, you can also ensure that he's not your enemy. And of course, you know that in strategy, execution, you know, is, you know, is key. And so for him, if he has plotted that, it needs to also execute by ensuring that you correct the favor of this man. And don't forget that in 2015, too, it was OBJ they went to meet to come champion the cause. In fact, to lead the road. I remember that phrase, that should come lead the road. So you don't expect him that when he was campaigning for someone else, he went to meet him to lead the road. But when he's campaigning for himself now, he will leave the man. That's not possible. And so for him, that was, that was strategic. However, um, you don't also expect uh, everything they discuss to be in the public space. Of course, if that happens, then maybe... We have seen some deception in there. The fact that what they discuss is not in the public space should even give more assurance to his camp. And I think uh, keeping it that way would have been much more better than uh, slipping some things out. It was unnecessary. And they got the feedback from OBJ who said those who were releasing those things out are not actually his friends because if they are, they would have known that it is best to keep such you know, where it belongs, the private places. Some support are not meant to be thrown. You know, uh, 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 you know, as a show off, some are meant to be kept till the day of the battle. Yeah, speaking of um, them not disclosing whatever they must have discussed, do you have any idea what must have gone down there in the closed door meeting? <laughs> well, I'm not there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the five persons there, Nuhuri Badu, uh, uh, the Speaker of the House of Representative, Wajabia Miller, you have the former governor of uh, Ogun State, Chief Shegun Shaba. Then you have the governor of Ogun State. I mean, uh, I think yes, that. So if you if you if you have any of them in the studio and you ask them, I doubt if they will be able to tell you. Mm. However, from what we you know from what we're hearing, obviously, they must have discussed. And and uh, the president came out to say, oh, that uh, and we heard that one of the things they said there is that he said that uh, he was part of the meeting where PDP agreed that, they should, that the presidency you know, should be in rotation and that that has not been, you know, that of course, it's not the case as it were now. And invariably, or inferring that, of course, uh, by that arrangement and by the rule of national cohesion, it should be the turn of the South. And I think we should leave the discussion at, at that because you also have two persons contesting, you know, in this, in this same South, you have Peter being the race, I mean the leading ones anyway, sorry. Then you have Ashwajibola Abintinubu. So for him as an elder statement, even if he will support anyone, mm. for now, it will be good for him to keep it in the wrap till, you know, till, till the, you know, till the time that that should, you know, be necessary. And don't forget that he will not also support whoever will lose. So head or tail, it is the person with the biggest chances of winning that he will support. Straight back to 2019, when he, when, when he, when he threw his way behind Atiku. And he said, within the present scenario, not necessarily that he likes Atiku that much, no. Mm -hmm. Of course, he has come out to tell you now that Atiku, you know, that he even regretted bringing him aboard. But he said, within that present scenario, despite what he had written against him, despite their animosity in the past, we said within the present scenario that the best person to support at that time was Atiko. So I think if you if you if you bring that to you know to this situation, if you bring it to this mold, you will you may likely guess who he support to be for when the time comes. He will support whoever has the higher capacity to win. He wouldn't want to support whoever will not be able to win because there are also consequences. So for me, what they discuss will be about election strategy. And of course, if you are I mean you understand that without strategy, execution is aimless. And without execution, too, strategy is aimless. So let's keep, let's keep the details there and see what, what, uh, uh, what, what that you know, portends for you know, uh, 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 the campaign of Ashwajal. 
Amen Tinubu. All right. Thank you very much for your contribution so far. But right now, we will go on a short break and Newsweek continues. Stay with us. Now, uh, electricity workers suspended their industrial action hours after it started on Wednesday. The decision to suspend the strike for two weeks was part of the outcome of an emergency meeting summoned by the Minister of Labor, Chris Ngigi. At the end of their uh, three-hour log meeting, the workers agreed to suspend the industrial action which threw the country into a total blackout. The workers expressed optimism the government will listen to their voice of reasoning and prioritize their welfare and well-being. The issues that we had, I thank the Honorable Minister and uh, the Minister of State for Power for their maturity in handling these issues that we brought up. Yes, these issues could have been tackled earlier on if uh, there was the rightful communication with all parties. But well, as we have said, um, we've been given two weeks uh, to wish to report back to the, uh, the full house. Um, well, we are sure the nation that uh, such crisis will be nipped in the board before it uh, escalates. Joining me via Zoom to analyze this issue, I have the Deputy President, Nigeria Labor Congress, and General Secretary, the National Union of Electricity Employees, Joe Ajero. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. All right. Let's share your thoughts on how the electricity workers pledged more than 200 million people into darkness for hours. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think a keen observer in the events in the sector will tell you that the whole issues have been on since 2013. And that in 2009, again, after various efforts to resolve some of the fallouts of the privatization exercise, another one day action commenced. But with the intervention of the Speaker of the House of Reps, uh, who mediated, and the Minister of Labor took over from there, certain agreements were reached. And we doubted the sincerity of the parties to implement it. The Speaker assured the electricity workers that within three months, this matter will be addressed. And between 2019, December to date, None, and I repeat, none of the issues contained therein were addressed. Besides, some other issues cropped up in addition to all these, for which we issued series of correspondences to government side, Minister of Power, PCN, you know, head of service, office of various offices, and they failed to acknowledge our correspondence. By May 18th, we issued the first strike after getting frustrated, the first strike notice. And nobody responded. We gave a further notice 
some of these notices have been published, threat to strike and all that in major newspaper were totally ignored. And in order to in order to protest what we are doing, we started our picketing action, you know, a day before. And we knew that if we started picketing a day or two, you know, our prayer, it will affect our situation in the country. And by the second day, we started our action, the system started going down. You know, it was almost a total uh, collapse, total before the intervention of the minister for an action that has lasted less than six hours for us to start a call up. And the government asked for two weeks, and you know, two weeks is not long. And we are waiting for the two weeks, you know, for the main cocoa. That's all, where we are. Yeah, all right. The union suspended the strike for two weeks to resolve the pending issue. Do you see the issue being addressed within the time frame? <clears throat> well, the issues, uh, if there is commitment on the part of the government, uh, they can start. They can start somewhere in trying to resolve them. The ones that had to do with funding, the ones that had to do with payment, the ones that had to do with the reversal of even uh, letters that were that were misinterpreted and circular. You know, when people who are working for the state fail to understand the difference between circular and the personal letter, then it doesn't take two weeks for you to reverse it. And correct it, correct it accordingly, you know. And so many other issues. There are issues that are administrative issues that could be corrected overnight. You know, and there are issues that when you start the processes, the unions will know that something is on the open. I don't see them as difficult issues if there is good faith. All right, Ajay, you you agree with me that Nigeria has struggled with poor electricity for decades. And how do you think we can get this resolved? Well, from the way we are going now, anybody that criticizes what is happening, like some of us, the person is uh, branded as an enemy, you know, attack dogs are released on the person. So they don't want us to discuss it. When the country is ready and willing, I think there will be, you know, a conscious effort by all parties for us to have a national debate, you know, a very sincere debate on how to fix the power sector, but not as presently uh, constituted, not a, a privatized electricity sector. And that is what those uh, investors, so-called investors don't want to hear. And that is why they will come out to tell you that if Ajayero says that he should be jailed, he should be put to prison. This present privatized electricity sector cannot you know, save Nigeria. It is collapsing, it is dying. The so-called investors that borrow money, the banks, are taking over the sector. There's nothing anybody can do about it. None of them have generated even one watt in the last nine years. And the government is using the money to develop the country, you know, to pay the so-called investors. Over two trillion has been paid. The commodity you sold for uh, 400 billion, you sold your, company, your utility for 400 billion, and then you have given the buyers over two trillion. Nigeria economy will collapse in trying to provide subsidy for the power sector. This is not the way it is. That wasn't the situation when it was under government control. We should all come together without all this blackmail all over about the people that know, you know the situation in the sector. We should come together and discuss it or else it will collapse on our heads. All right, Mr. Jared, thank you for your contribution so far. Thank you very much. All right. We are moving on to our last story for tonight. Nigeria's Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning says the federal government pays subsidy on every imported litre of premium motor spirit. Zainab Ahmed pegs the daily subsidy rate at 18.39 billion naira, while the special committee investigator in the fuel subsidy regime faulted these figures. National Assembly correspondent Jokia Desai reports. After several invitations, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning is before the Special Committee investigating the fuel subsidy regime. She apologizes over her inability to honor the committee's invitations before now, and the chairman sets the ball rolling. 
Ibrahim Aliyu expresses concerns about the 6.7 trillion naira proposed as subsidy for 2023. National Assembly, being a major stakeholder, feels <coughs> this figure is worrisome, knowing fully that the country has to resort to borrowing to finance um, some of the previous budgets. The minister gives a synopsis of her presentation. She says the landing cost per liter of petrol stands at 448 naira, while Nigeria pays 18.39 billion naira every day as fuel subsidy. This situation is, is not desirable and it is not sustainable. It is putting the country in very serious, dire financial situation, and we do hope that we will be able to exit this subsidy uh, regime. But members are displeased with the figures provided by the minister. They query the rationale behind the use of petroleum profit tax of the NNPC to pay subsidy. As the Haddock Committee continues its investigations, it promises to get to the root of the fuel subsidy regime in the overall interest of Nigeria and the poor masses they represent. Choke Edsa. TVC News, Abuja. Welcome back. I still have with me in the studio to discuss this head of research acts of positive transformation initiative, Kolawali Johnson. Right. Uh, the lawmakers believe the figure is over bloated, that the ministry uh, should have done diligence to um, due diligence, rather, to arrive at an acceptable cons uh, consumption rate. Let's have your thought on this. Acceptable consumption rate or the actual consumption rate? Anyone can fail. Sure. Uh, I think um, when you don't drive a pro I mean, such a process, any development process, you don't drive with data. Mm. This is what you come to. It is easier for people, you know, it is easier for, 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 for people who want to cut cut short, you know, uh, uh, processes? Who want to, you know, who, who are given to, you know, underlining uh, 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 gain uh, to to hide and do what what is expected of them anyway in the first instance? And what you will ask the National Assembly is first, mm. when the president brought mm -hmm. a budget. I mean, brought a request to borrow about four point something trillion naira to finance subsidy. You wonder what formed the basis of that approval for the president. If you are coming to query consumption now, on the same payment you approve. If you're coming to query the data, because the entire data they are bringing together is to just match up with what they brought to borrow and what I mean, what they are, what they envisage in the proposal they brought it me in the request they brought before the National Assembly that was approved. So if you approved it without asking question, <laughs> why are you now asking question now? When you should have asked a question when they brought the proposal before you. Mm -hmm. For example, if I tell you that, oh, isn't I? Please, come and give me four trillion naira. I want to use it to buy some truckloads of cement to build, you know, to build a structure mm -hmm. in this place. Would you not ask me, ah, why do you want, why do you need four trillion naira to build the structure? Mm -hmm. So, after giving you the money, is that the time to start asking you why you need the four trillion naira to build the structure? It is not. So, it also shows you that we've not really had the National Assembly to act as a proper checks and balances mm. to the executive. The National Assembly is not there to romance the executive. No, they will have, they will have. You know,
amount of consumption in the country. That used to be the case. Even the NLC in those days you know, would have been able to go you know, underground and bring research on board so that we can know at least something very close that will disprove the fact you have on ground. Mm -hmm. You cannot counter, you cannot counter, so to speak, the facts you know, they brought with sentiment. You need to also bring a counter, you know, a counter fact. Obviously, we can't be consuming this much. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you were talking about, uh, uh, you know, 10 years range that we have grown over a 100% increase in a spread of 10 years, we are saying that is impossible. Looking at the economy, looking at the population, mm -hmm. even looking at the data on ground. But unfortunately, we keep paying for that. And so we know that the statistics on ground that they have been, or that, uh, that the government is presenting to us through the Minister of Finance, it's practically impossible. But we do not have a counterfeit. Mm. We do not have, let in quotes, a counter data to put before that. All right. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Thank you for your contribution so far. You're most welcome. Thank you. All right. And that's the show for this week. Remember that you can follow us on our social media platform, at TVC News uh, NG, or on our website, at TVCNews.tv. I am Jacinta Obiuku. Until the next week, it's bye for now.